Well, what's up, local crew? Hope everybody is doing well. I'm here in my office right now, getting ready for week three of Mighty this Sunday. But we're in week two of Mighty Crew, so let's talk about week two. And I'll say this, man. Week two, we really challenged three people types. We always pray, God, take the message and tailor make it for somebody's life today. And I think we saw God do that on Sunday. So our main text was Judges chapter 6, verse 25 through 31. Y'all are going to work through it, your crew host. Maybe y'all read it right off the top. Totally up to you guys. But I preached a sermon called Home Field Advantage. Like, what do you do when you don't have home field advantage? We all came to the agreeance early on in the sermon. The truth is, right now on the track we're on we are not a christian nation like on the track we're on come on now let's be real we're not a christian nation so all this in mind doing it in a society where you don't have home field advantage right off the top we talked about this idea the lord chose gideon why did the lord choose gideon was there something in his life was it something about him was he in bible college was he in local crew why did the Lord choose Gideon? It's really simple. The Lord chose Gideon for the same reason he chooses me. The same reason he chooses you. Here we go. Judges chapter 6. Hope you got your notes. I got mine. Verse 25. That night. Come on, everybody, right where you're at. Say that night. That night. The Lord said to Gideon, Take the second bull from your father's herd, the one that is how old? Seven. The one that's seven. Pull down your father's altar to Baal. And by the way, cut down the Asherah pole right there in the backyard. While you're there, go ahead and do that. That night, we talked about like he had just done so many great things for the Lord. He had built an altar. He, the Lord uh, lit some goat on fire, some rocks on fire. Go read that in chapter six. But that night, and it's that moment like, have you ever done something great for God? But then he was like, yep, that night. Do it right then, right there. Procrastination kills progress, right? Procrastination will leave you in a place where you are unprepared. I love this thought right here. The seeds of faith are expectation and preparation. But here's the problem. Many of us are living a life of default rather than a life of design. Because when you're preparing, you're lining things up. You're getting excited. You're, you're making moves in your marriage, in your career, in your job. You're doing all this stuff, right? But many of us, unfortunately, we've lived and settled for a life of default. Whatever happens, happens. Whatever friends present themselves, present themselves. Whatever job opportunity comes into my life, comes into my life. But procrastination leaves you with the lie, I'll get to it later. Later never makes its way onto my calendar, and I know for a fact it doesn't make its way onto your calendar either. Gonna have some great discussion on that. But verse 26, then after you tear that down, build an altar to the Lord your God here on this hilltop sanctuary, laying the stones carefully, Sacrifice the bull as a burnt offering using the fuel, uh, fuel the wood, the, use the Asherah pole you cut down, use that for fuel, right? So he's taking the, the bull that's seven, right? That season is coming to an end, seven. The number of completion, the season of oppression is coming to an end. So we keep reading right there. And like the truth is, when we talk about tearing down idols in 2024, it got tense right here in this part of the sermon. Um, Truth is, we're not taking a field trip and going and tearing down. The reality is, maybe idols could be statements that are widely accepted and celebrated in our culture, and even unfortunately, sometimes are widely celebrated and accepted inside the church, right? We'll go through them. Here we go. Pride is a sin. Okay, these are counter statements, okay? Pride is a sin. It's what got Satan kicked out of heaven, okay? Pride's that thing that you can't see in the mirror. Pride's that thing that makes you focus on everybody else's sin, but won't focus on your own. Another one, you can't separate Jesus and politics. He's all of your life, not a part of your life. No, all of our life. Here's another one. Uh, God created you on purpose for a purpose. He created you on purpose. And the last one, masculinity is not toxic. Those are some idols. Here we go. Verse 27. It's, my, it's probably my favorite part of the sermon right here. So Gideon took 10 of his servants and did as the Lord commanded him. He took 10 people with him. A lot of people miss this. He took 10. The whole time he had been by himself on his own. But in this moment, he took 10 people with him. Watch what Ecclesiastes chapter 4 says. Two are better than one, for they can help each other succeed. And if one of you falls down, the other can reach out. But man, someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Satan has this verse memorized. This one's on his fridge. He knows if I can just get him alone, if I can just get her alone, I've got her. Pick your friends carefully. The kind of friends that say, you know what? Get up. 
get back in church, get back in the house of God. Talked about this idea that birds fly 70% further when they are with each other. We talked about fly with the flock. You want to go fast, go alone. You want to go far, go together. Some good discussion there. Here we go. Verse 28. Early the next morning, as the people of the town began to stir, some would discover, oh my goodness, the altar of Baal's broken down and the Asherah poles been cut down. In their place was a new altar built. Right, here we go. The remains of the bull that were sacrificed were on top of it. Verse 29, the people said to each other, who did this? After asking around, come on, having a small town Bible study, they figured out, oh my goodness, Gideon, the son of Joash. The son of Joash, don't miss this. This was in his dad's backyard. These false god idols were in his own father's backyard. Evidently, Joash had not been such a great dad after all. Evidently, Gideon's mom and dad hadn't done such a good job. These were people of God. These were people who heard the stories of, of the Red Sea, who heard the story is, uh, of wandering and then finally getting into the promised land. These were, people of, uh, these were people of God, people that were at one point in their life serving God, but at some point got away from the fact that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, our God, right? They got away from this fact. And we really challenged the parents here, which was the last people group we challenged uh, with three things, okay? Your children need you to be an example. Yeah, they look like you, but they also are going to act like you. They need you to be an example. Your children also, the things that need to die, you got to let them die. And the last one, the things that need to live, need to live. There's gifts, there's passion in your life that cannot go into the ground with you. It needs to live on. Here we go. The best scripture of the whole entire text. Here we go. It's not too late to be a great parent. Verse 30. Bring out your son. Bring him out. Bring him out. He must die for what he did. Verse 31. Wow. But Joab shouted to the mob and confronted him. Why are you guys even defending Baal? Why are you arguing his case? Whoever pleads his case will be put to death by morning. But if Baal is truly God, let him defend himself. I hope you have a great crew. I love you. Week three, mighty, this Sunday, Judges chapter seven. It's going down. Love you.